Alright, so in this video we're going to learn about how to manage Active Directory Forest Trust with PowerShell. Okay, so our mission is just to pretty much manage everything there is to manage with Active Directory Trust. So we're going to create the trust between the two forests, and then we're going to test them to make sure they're working properly, and then we are finally going to remove them. So we're going to take them through the whole life cycle. All right, so first up, we need to provide a credential to connect to the source domain controller and the destination domain controller, so both of them. I need both of them because my Windows 10 computer that I'm working with here is in a work group and it's not in either domain, so I need to provide alternative credentials to each of them. All right, so to do that, I first need to bring in each of the credentials, so I'll provide my A Bertram password to each of these. All right, and once I do that, then I can create PowerShell session. I'm creating a PowerShell session here using new PS session on both domain controllers because now once I have that session set, I can just run commands against each of those sessions multiple times without having to open different ones, just essentially opening up two connections to both domain controllers. Okay, since I'm going to be executing some commands on these domain controllers, generally the same different commands, I've decided to create an array here. So I've created an array with a couple of hash tables. Okay, so next up, since we are going to be depending a lot on PowerShell moding in this instance, I have to set up cred SSP. So to do that, cred SSP is set up two ways. You set it up on the client. So in this case, I can set the trusted host so to be able to connect to the machines. I can hit yes. And then, yes, I'm going to enable WSBAN cred SSP. Don't expect you to know this. This is not pertinent to this demonstration for sure. So I have created a link here to give you some information on how to do that. Okay, so once credit SSP is enabled on the client, then I can enable it on each of the domain controllers. And you can see that I can do that with my for each loop. All right, so next up, we need to make sure that DNS resolution is working on the domain controller. So each domain controller needs to resolve the other one before this will work. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use a conditional forwarder like I'm doing here, or you can use a stub zone. So you can create either domain controller and DNS server. So in this instance here, on line 61 here, I'm starting that loop. So I'm doing the same action on both domain controllers. I'm using invoke command when I was doing the cred SSP configuration, specifying the session. So it's going to be either the test DC session or the prod DC session. So I'm just making that connection to the domain controllers. And then I have the script block here, which is where I'm using add DNS server conditional forwarder zone. That is where I'm running this command on each of those domain controllers. And I'm doing that by passing the using variable here. That essentially passes a local variable on the local machine here. It passes that value to the remote computer. So in this case, changing information on test DC. So to do that, let's say that on test DC and I'm using i.domain, since i is in for each here, the domain is going to be techsnips-test.local. The master server here is i.dns server. So we go up here, it's DNS server. It's going to be 10.04.100. And then the replication scope is forest. If I have more than one domain controller in each of these forests, it will just replicate to all of them. So I can run this, see what happens. Actually, let's see if that works. Nope, that's not going to work because we haven't pasted in our configuration. Remember, you have to do, you have to paste that information in there. All right, so now you can run this, and then now it's going to execute that command on each of the domain controllers. And now you can see it says failed to create zone, blah, 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 on the server prod DC, on the server test DC because it already exists, because I had created it just previously, which is fine, it will work. I promise it will work if they aren't created. So that's setting up DNS resolution. So let's go ahead and clear this. There's two different ways we're gonna, so we're going to set up a two-way forest trust, and we're going to do this on both sides at once. So we can connect to one domain controller, and it's going to create the trust relationship on both sides. So to do this, the Active Directory PowerShell module doesn't include this by default. So we notice we have to do a lot of .NET stuff in here. So what I'm doing here in a nutshell is starting on line 70 through 78, that is going to be the script block. That is going to be the portion of code that we're going to run 
In this case, we're going to run that on the prod DC, which is the techsnips.local for us. So on line 71, that's where we have to get the directory services.active directory dot forest object. We're going to grab that, that current forest object. Then we specify the remote forest name. So since we're going to be executing this on prod DC, you have to use these test name. That's techsnips-test.local. Specify the remote user, the remote password. Those are going to be the users on the remote side since there's the username is the exact same one. They're going to be exact same one on either side. Then on 75, we specify the remote context. This is another .NET object that we have to create. And we create that using the directory context object, specifying the forest, since we're going to be using a forest trust here, and then specifying the remote user, forest, remote user, remote password, et cetera, as arguments. Then we finally create the forest object using dollar sign remote forest. And then that's where we get the forest and pass in that remote context to it. So we, this is kind of this the lead up to the final one here where we execute the create trust relationship method on the local forest object here. And here is where we, it's important because we have, this is where we specify the remote for us. So the, the trust that we're going to set up to. And then finally the direction. We're going to be using bi-directional trust in this demo. Uh, but you can see here we can also do bi-directional inbound outbound and here is a link for you that you can download in the resources okay so now that we have got that all built out then i will go ahead and execute this and then it says a forest trust relationship exists between techsnips local and techsnips test all right that's because i must have already had this set up but we can take a turn here and let's actually just remove it so we'll skip down here to remove trust and here I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm creating a command on prod DC. And then now notice that I'm using the delete trust relationship and I'm using the remote forest variable object that I had created before. So I can go ahead and run this and this should remove it. All right, so let's go over here and we try this again. And voila, we didn't receive any errors that time. Perfect. Okay, so next. Confirm both sides see the trust. So we can run a command um, on each of them called get ad trust. So in line 84 there, that's the gist of it. We're running get ad trust and passing a filter of star, which essentially just grabs all of the trusts that it can find. So when I run that, notice that we got two different objects back. So we have techsnips.local and we have techsnips-test.local. So that's great ran it on both of them and it sees the trust on both of them that's exactly what we want to see however we don't necessarily know if that trust is healthy or not if it's actually working and we can test that by using wmi so in this instance starting on line 89 here i am going to query wmi on each of the domain controllers using the get sim instance command i'm using the class of microsoft domain trust status and then a namespace of the root microsoft actor directory this essentially just queries that specific class and namespace, and that's going to give us some information that we want to see. It will tell us if the trust is actually working or not. All right, so I will go ahead and run this, and see what the output looks like. All right, got two objects back. And then notice that the trust status is zero, trust status string is okay, and trust is okay, properties are true. Looks like we have this on both of them. So that confirms that the trust looks good on the test side and also on the production side. So that's awesome. All right, so you've already seen this part, so we'll just skip through this and run this by itself. So we'll go ahead and remove it just so we can confirm that it's gone. And then again, I'll run this exact same command here to test and then notice that nothing came back. So we have no trust created on either of those. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and we can create the trusts one at a time. So whenever you create a trust, you don't have to create them both differently. Maybe there's different teams creating the trust, different organizations. You can create one side at a time. And to do this, it's exactly the same thing. This is exactly the same code, except for line 115, where instead of, what was that method called? Instead of create trust relationship, it's actually create local side of trust relationship. And the arguments are a little bit different. So in this case, it's remote forest bi-directional and remote password. I believe it's a little bit different. Yes, so it only has two arguments up here where it has three over here. We need to pass the remote password to it whenever we create the local side. So everything is exactly the same except that method that we're calling. All right, so we'll go ahead and create the, the local side of the trust in the production environment. 
All right, so now we are going to connect to the production domain controller, and this should work. All right, yep, it is, sees it. Okay, now we'll do the test side. Then now notice that it doesn't exist. We've only created one side of the local trust. So let's go ahead and we'll test the trust on the prod side and see what happens. All right, so now you can notice that the get80 trust returned the test, but it wasn't actually a good test because it wasn't actually working. So you can see there that it says trust status string in the security database on the server, not computer account, blah, blah, blah. That's because the other side of the trust doesn't exist yet. We can remediate that. So now let's just create it on the other side. All this information is exactly the same as the other one, except we are just going to create it on the other side. All right, now that we've created it on the test side, we're going to hope that this works now. So this should work on prod. All right, so now you see it has trust status string, okay, zero, all, it's all good. All right, so now that we've got all this set up, we, now we can just go ahead and remove them. And remove them is everything, all the code here is exactly the same. So you notice here on 145 and 146, the script block only contains one line. I'm actually using the values of all of the variables that I provide earlier, such as local forest, STR remote forest, STR remote user, all this information. I'm reusing that same session over and over and over again. So that's why how it knows what local forest is and remote forest is here on lines 145 and 146. All right, so I can go ahead and remove these. And now everything should be cleaned up. It's exactly the way it, it was. There's no relationship to them whatsoever. And then since I was using PowerShell remoting, I need to clean up my sessions. And then now, we're good. We went through all everything that you needed to. However, I personally don't want to worry about having to remember all of this .NET code and this get sim instance thing and all this information. So what we can do is we can create these into a few different functions here. So what I've done is I've created three functions, new AD force trust, remove, and test. Because as you notice that we didn't have any native AD trust commands other than this one, get AD trust. So by default, Microsoft doesn't provide new a way to create AD trust and remove them. That's why we had to drop down into .NET here. Okay, so I've created these three functions, and the functions, what they do are exactly the same. However, I've been able to parameterize them to provide building blocks so you can just create these over and over and over again if you want. And I'm not going to go down through these in any detail whatsoever, but you can peruse these at your at your leisure if you want to understand more about how they work. For the most part, I'm just providing a way to connect to one domain controller and establish the trust to the other one, providing the various parameters here that I want to use. So notice that they're exactly the same other than there's a few things I do want to point out, though. In new AD Forest Trust here, notice that I have the script block and I have if using local only else is this. So this conditional logic here allows us to use one function to create both the local side of a trust and create the entire trust it wants. It gives us some flexibility, which is great. It's exactly what we want. And then notice on line 205 here, I'm using invoke command. I'm not using the session parameter anymore because I don't have to reuse it over and over and over again. I just need to go out and reach the remote domain controller one time and that's it. So everything else is exactly the same here. Okay, and then I have forest trust. Again, exact same scenario, providing the uh, you know local only. In this case, see if I specify local only, it's going to delete the local side. If not, it's going to delete the whole thing. Same thing here. And then in test 80 forest trust, this is where I added a little bit more additional logic here. And test 80 forest trust, it's going to go out on line 274, connect once it connects to the domain controller, it's going to run get 80 trust and see if that individual trust, it's getting more granular than just putting a star there. It's going to see if that trust exists first. If the trust doesn't exist, it's just going to throw an error message and say, though the trust doesn't exist and give up. If it does see that the trust exists, then it's going to run that get sim instance command and get that trust status back. Then it goes down and check, is the trust status string okay? If it's not, then it's going to go throw, go ahead and throw whatever the status string of it is. And if it's working, the trust is good, it's going to return true. Okay, so now that you have a brief overview of these functions, let's go ahead and bring these into our session. Okay, once they are in the session, 
quickly go over these here. We've already created the trust, but we've already actually removed them. So first off, I want to see where I am in this environment. So I can go ahead and run test AD Forest Trust. Okay, so it says the trust does not exist. So I connected to the test domain controller, look for the trusted domain, which is the techsnips.local, the production AD Forest, and it does not exist. So, okay, that's fine. If it doesn't exist, well, let's just go ahead and create one. Since I already have the production credential and the test credential already saved, I can just go ahead and create one, All right? So let's try this again. And then now it just returns true. So great, we know that the trust was created and the trust is working. And then finally, we can just remove it. So I'm using that function again, passing all the parameters that I created before using those same credentials and it removes. So we can just finally test this again and it says it does not exist. So went from creating multiple different kinds of trust, we're testing those trusts to make sure they work and then finally removing them and we finally then went over the functions at the end, which is definitely the, the takeaway here. I highly recommend going to GitHub to the SNP scripts, GitHub repo, downloading the script, playing it with yourself and, and building your own functionality. So thanks for watching.